Five exotics were glad to appreciate it. Brief explanation, exotic and supercar don't mean the same thing. A car can be a supercar without being exotic, and a car can be exotic without having supercar performance. Or a car can be both, it can be an exotic supercar. I mention this because some cars in this video will be slow as bollocks, but admittedly, they are still from a prestigious nameplate with limited production numbers, which qualifies as an exotic. You're gonna see what I mean when we get along. First car in this video, Acura NSX 2nd Generation. Remember when this car was brand new for 200 grand and all those fanboys were like, you're just a hater, this car will become a modern classic. After all, the previous gen NSX appreciated. And yes, the previous NSXs did appreciate, in fact, they're more expensive than this one is now. That does not mean that this one will go up too. This was never worth 200 grand. The previous one went up because this one sucked so much, it reminded people of how fantastic the previous one was. For 200 grand, the second gen NSX competed with far more renowned supercar brands with more luxury, more elegance, heritage, status, and speed. But the NSX can now be had for 120 grand used. I have been really hard on this car in the past, and I still hate its nameplate. But you know what? Every car does bottom out somewhere, and I doubt this NSX is going to keep dropping until 10 years from now it becomes 40 grand. That's ridiculous, because admittedly, it's still a high-performance, exotic-looking car. So if you want to buy one, I'm pretty sure you can now safely buy one, since the market has agreed this is a price worth buying the car at. As now the cars are finally leaving dealerships, even brand new ones. Yes, that's right. There are still brand new ones that are sitting on the lot for 139 grand. And this is tragic because its absolute launch failure means that Acura will probably never attempt the third generation. Maserati GT MC Stradale. While I absolutely loathe the brand new price on these, admittedly the used price is a staggering deal. Doug says that they become a great deal around 70 to 80 grand, to which I completely disagree with, as the market has decided that they bottom out at 40 to 50 grand. You know, ones that are almost 10 years old, like 2011 and 2012 MCs that still have low mileage, like 20 grand. And they're still in that price range, 40 to 50 grand. This is what is known as fully depreciated, which means that they've hit rock bottom of their depreciation curve. Yes, some of them may still go lower if they have accident history, but generally speaking, you can safely buy Maserati GTMC at this price. And you're not going to bleed tens of thousands. Like even at 70 to 80 grand, you're still going to bleed tens of thousands from depreciation. But at 40 to 50 grand... After five or so years, every Maserati Gran Turismo will somehow get stuck at this price and then it just doesn't drop anymore, especially for the MC Stradales. I don't think they're going to drop anymore is because if they were to go to like 20, 30 grand, everyone's going to buy one. They're going to they're be too much of a good deal at that point. The car is a very muted, subtle, but still a sporty Italian style, which may not be for everyone, but look, I get its appeal. Your main reason for buying this car should be for the sound, because like I said, the successor won't have any sound, it's like going to be an electric car. Another reason I mention that is because it's a cross-plane Ferrari engine, which is a very unique sound, and admittedly, I think it's beautiful. I think it's probably hands down one of the best sounding V8s, bone stock, and that's very important for people who live in countries where they can't modify their cars anyway, so they have to take what's given to them and just go with it. Having said that though, this car's strong suit will never be speed. Bone stock, a Mustang GT, Lexus RCF, and BMW M3, they're going to obliterate it. So it's really sad when you're not just losing to a Mustang from a speed standpoint, but also from a technology standpoint, which usually people rag on American cars for. So that's a miracle that the Maserati has somehow achieved that. Do keep in mind that the car is a very limited aftermarket. So back to the speed argument. Someone's probably in the comments like, I'll just slap a Novatech supercharger on it. Then I'll be faster than a BMW M3. Yeah, not for long because the only thing you'll be accelerating faster towards is a blown engine. Look, I don't like anecdotal evidence. So many people use it in car videos where they're just like, well, I have one and it didn't break. Especially when hard facts show that yes, the vast majority of these do break. There is a reason why Maserati is the absolute lowest ranking brand year after year for reliability. You do need to swallow that pill. For 45 grand, you're getting a great car, but you better do some good research, and no matter how much research you do, you may still have to cross your fingers a little bit because the maintenance for this car will someday get you. Aston Martin Vantage. The body style from 2005 is the same as the one from 2018. While, of course, the V8 one started in 05 and the 18 one was actually V12 because I think the V8 one ended in 17. You get the point, semantics aside. This means that you can buy an old one from like 2005 to 2008 ish, and it's still going to look just as beautiful and modern as a two year old Aston Martin would. 
That's amazing because Astons are very well renowned for their British racing heritage, their appearances in James Bond films, but more importantly, their timeless design. They're very elegant cars that aren't super flashy, but they're not muted either, which is what I love about them. Because whereas a lot of companies these days like Maserati or Jaguar, whenever they make a sporty luxury car, they, they stay too much on the muted side, they play it too safe. And that, and that may be a bit boring for some of the more extravagant buyers. When you're looking for an exotic, most people who buy exotic cars, they already have that one super flashy car. Maybe they already have that Lamborghini Aventador, but they want another cool exotic that has some class, that exudes some class, rather, to add to their collection. They may not like something that's as muted as a Maserati or Jaguar, and that's where the Aston shines. It's something that has boastworthy curves that are executed just correctly to add to its luxurious look. It's difficult for talented designers to be able to make something balance this flash in class, but Aston Martin has been doing this for several decades, and they will continue to do so for their new releases. McLaren 570S, y'all mind if I explode off warranty? Yeah, if you want a McLaren, get an extended warranty. It's honestly shocking to me that within a few years, this car almost lost half its value. Like, I've been ragging on the NSX at the beginning of this video, but after doing some research and found this car for this video, I was in shock. Whoa, I thought the NSX lost value. Holy crap. And the worst part is this is a car people compared to the NSX because like, I'd rather have this because... Admittedly, it's sexy. This is a beautiful exotic. Design-wise, I can see why someone would pay every single penny for it, even at the brand new price. And for 125 grand, even with all the garbage reliability, maybe, maybe you might stomach it. I mean, look, it's got butterfly doors. What else can you want from a car? And for this last entry, let's play a game. Try to guess it. Made from 2006 to 2010, exotic V10 Scream, rare and exclusive with about 14,000 produced. 500 horsepower, 3.5 seconds, 0 to 60, two doors, carbon fiber chassis, carbon fiber roof, carbon fiber interior, luxurious leather, and groundbreaking technology actually for the time of release. This car, brand new, was over 100 grand. Did you guess the car? Well, guess what? It's not a Lamborghini Gallardo or an Audi R8. It's the BMW M6. I avoided putting this car in any list video solely because I did not want to drive the values up because I wanted to buy one myself, but I'm long over that. So how are the vast majority of them selling for? Would you believe me that you can get this literal exotic performer for just 15 to 20 grand? It has the material, the luxury, the styling, and the power to be a supercar. It has so many carbon fiber parts for Christ's sake. That alone probably cost 30 grand, so how was this car only 20 grand? This was BMW's answer to Audi's V10 R8, and admittedly, it was a great answer. So why did it depreciate like a cinder block dropped in the Pacific while the R8 held its value amongst other supercars and even is acknowledged as a supercar, while this car became the world's most obscure supercar, and at this day and age, it is the cheapest supercar you can buy that has a V10 sound, amazing styling, 500 horsepower, for Christ's sake, it's carbon fiber, everything. Don't argue with me that this isn't a supercar for styling-wise, because for a car made in 2006, it had insane performance figures. So why is the price so low? I'll give you the answer, and you guys have probably watched every single video on my channel probably already know. So, was it the rumored SMG? Were they really that bad? Yeah, yeah they were. The S85 V10 was BMW's only production V10 ever made. It was made to celebrate their V10 and their F1 at the time, and great engine honestly. It was absolutely held back by its awful SMG3 transmission. Yes, the third iteration by the way, they went through three of these garbage things and they still sucked. Don't even dream of buying a manual, by the way, because they only made 701 for US market only, so you won't ever find one in Europe. And none of those owners are letting go of their car for a reasonable price. If you want this car, you'll be stuck with the woeful SMG3, which just the worst transmission. Like everyone hates automatic transmissions, but this isn't even it's a it's a in-between point. So it's not an auto or manual, it's a halfway. I've got a video that explains all that. I'll link it at the end of the video. Look. This, this transmission is so bad, it can stall mid-traffic, and, and I would know it because I test drove a ton of these cars, and that happened every single time during stop and go. And it's not because of driver error, because you don't have any access to the clutch. It's the car, it's the SMG that's responsible for that, and its shifting could best be described as a teenager who just learned stick, especially in stop and go traffic. It is awful. It's going to eat through SMG pumps that are going to run 
12 grand each time you repair it. And this can happen at 50k miles or as soon as 20k miles. Who knows? Some of their owners even had their new pump fail right after replacing it just 3 grand miles ago. Let dedicated car guys get this car. If you have 20 grand to buy this car, make sure you have like 10 or so grand afterwards. Not to repair the SMG, but hear me out for a swappable transmission. If you know someone who has a lot of transmission swapping experience or you are someone capable of that, DCT swap or six speed swap this car. It blows my mind how a supercar can be had for 15 grand in today's market and how more people aren't jumping on that. And yes, I know it's going to cost a lot to fix it, but it's not going to cost as much to get any other V10 car in the world right now. If you do want to learn more about all kinds of transmissions, check out my Noob's Guide to Transmissions video. If you want to learn more about other depreciated cars that were glad dropped value, check out this video. Other than that, thanks for watching, and see y'all next time. Blade Angel out.